Hello guys and welcome back to our podcast Where in My Money. I'm Holly and I'm Amelia, which you should know by now. I know. <laughs> Today's episode is all going to be about preparing for spring because it is coming around so fast although it doesn't feel like it right now because it is Baltic oh outside. Oh god, I'm itching. I'm so itching for the new season. Warmth, yeah. light, like everything i'm, I'm just ready so to ditch the heavy coats oh, i ditched those ages ago i am like literally mentally in spring but obviously the weather is not given spring so i'm like i know <laughs> it's so cold outside i am ready to remove the bulk of coats from my wardrobe yeah and just free up so much space i know i feel like i need mum and dad to come over and the collection. Oh, I do the same. It's I so put good. all of my coats in recycling bags. Yeah. And I get my dad to pick them up and put them back in my wardrobe at home. At Amazing. My house. We have to. <laughs> have to swap the wardrobes around. This is London living. There's it not much is. space. No. I was literally looking at it the other day and I was just like, it just needs to go. It just needs to go. Also, you may or may not have noticed that we did skip a podcast week last week, which we're really sorry about i know it's just been do you know what it's just been chaotic and you yeah. obviously you had a, quite a big job yeah i've got big news guys big news <laughs> and i totally forgot that i even mentioned this on our first ever podcast we spoke oh about God, yeah. our manifestations for the year and our goals mm-hmm. and someone that listens to our podcast messaged me on instagram and she was like oh my god you manifested this in your oh. first ever podcast and it's happened and I, I totally forgot and yeah. made me realise. So I was manifesting getting a hair campaign, a global hair campaign. It's actually been on my manifestation list for about three years. Um, we so finally got there. It's <laughs> time. But I got it. It's amazing. Amazing. So very grateful, very happy. But I was very preoccupied with that all of last week. And it yeah. was so last minute that we just didn't have time to prepare mm-hmm. for a podcast and pre-film. So we're back. We're back. Last week was just chaos, wasn't it? Yeah. Lots of events, lots of jobs going on, but we're back. And we've got some updates, catching up to do. Yeah. Like we said, we're going into spring. So we want to have this podcast to be about catch up and also what we're investing into and how to start your spring summer wardrobe. Yeah, start preparing for the new season. And that includes like beauty treatments Mm -hmm. and stuff just to help us feel our best because winter is about hibernation oh my god they always say a summer body is built in winter (laughs) (laughs) where (laughs) oh god things like hair prep skin prep like i've been getting my laser hair removal i know i need to get back onto that bandwagon i still love it fantastic i'm Mm. getting it done at the therapy clinic yeah um, they have them all over. I'm going to the Fulham one because that's my local. And I think I'm on my third third full body session. Full body? Full body. Like your arms and everything? From my... Your toes? <laughs> from my eyelids. No, yeah, from my eyelids yeah. down. Wow, and do you shave it, everything? Yeah. You shave your arms? I feel how soft my arms are right now. Wow. I know. Well, I never. They're like silk if I say so myself. Wow. It's so good. Because I've had treatment done. I had it on my underarms, which was like incredible. And obviously down below. But that was like maybe two years ago. And I still don't get much hair growth back. That's really good. Really good. I've had it done previously, but it's always grown back. This one seems to be the best one. They use the Sino Shore laser. Mm. Previously, I've had the Soprano Ice. Right. Which was okay, but I do feel like the Sino Shore has been the most effective okay. for me. And is that the one, because with mine, because there are a couple different ones you can have, like, different things. Mm-hmm. So with mine, I wasn't allowed to fake tan, but I was allowed to have a natural tan. Yeah, so I think this one they prefer if you don't. But right. if it's been... At least two weeks since yeah. sun exposure, yeah. then I think it's, it's okay. Fine. Okay. I haven't had a holiday in a while, so it's not really been an issue. <laughs> so I'm not entirely sure about that. Yeah. But yeah, definitely no fake tan, no fake tan residue. No, that's the killer. Yeah. Because I had some residue on my thigh, and it like zapped a tiny bit of it, and it burnt me. Oh, god. I know. Don't wear fake tan. Weird. Yeah, I'm on my third session, and I've already noticed 
incredible results. Like, Amazing. I don't have to shave my armpits. Oh, yeah. Just the armpit there. hair is like nothing. It's so quick. Like, mine still doesn't grow back. That's amazing. It's mad. Like, I'd probably shave my armpits maybe once a month. Oh, my God. Yeah. I always feel like armpits just always look the worst as well, don't they? Like, even when you shave them, they just never look that cute. No, I think as well, I always... I actually found laser hair removal really good with ingrowns. Yeah, So, really I used good. to really suffer with ingrowns. And then when I started doing laser, nothing. Yeah. So good. It's just so nice being smooth all the time. I, I used to do um, feel... waxing. That's the worst. And I've got a good pain threshold. And I used to do Hollywood waxing. And... Oh. To yourself? No. Oh, my oh. God, no. I tried that in lockdown. And no, 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 no. But I used to get... Me and my uni girls, we used to go for Hollywood. And I'd actually have to go and hold their hands. Because they were that much better. Like, almost like going for a coffee date. Yeah. Let's go for a Hollywood wax yeah, date. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, it is... Great, so I'm definitely keeping up with that. Yeah. And I just feel like it makes you so much more confident when you wear a, bi a bikini. Mm. And it's obviously personal preference. If you like to have your natural hair, then so be it. It's yeah. natural, it's beautiful. But I am on the same side as you, is that I love to be baby smooth. I want to be as smooth as one of those hairless cats. <laughs> <laughs> They're a bit wrinkly. <laughs> well, I am in my 30s now. <laughs> A smooth cat. No, a hairless cat with Botox. Yeah. <laughs> so I've actually had a hair treatment done for spring, summer. Mm -hmm. So I have had the aura treatment. Yeah. I wanted to basically go for a keratin treatment because I'm going to Dubai. No one knew. <laughs> um, I wanted to get a keratin treatment to help with the frizz of my hair. Mm -hmm. Because as Holly may have known when we were in Bali and on our travels... This smooth hair turns into a bit of a Hermione situation. She really is. It's actually really cute. Really I do cute. like it, but it's in London and I think in more glamorous, yeah. luxury vacations. It's just not the vibe. It works for Bali life. Yeah, but also as well, I felt like, felt like I had more maintenance because I was trying to get rid of the frizz. Yeah. So... Basically, in my head, I wanted to go for the aura, uh, the keratin treatment. However, my hairdresser, I went to Daniel Galvin and I had Matt Taylor. He recommended the aura treatment, where basically, which I'm still intrigued with because I actually haven't seen my hair dry naturally. Yeah. But the aura treatment is a more of a natural process. It's got natural ingredients. It's vegan. It's derived by more natural formula. And it just gets rid of the frizz, so it doesn't get rid of the texture or the, like, the curl in your hair. So you could still have it naturally curly if you wanted to. Yeah, so I'll still have my... Smoother. Yeah, so I'll still have my wave. It doesn't get rid of that, but it just gets rid of the yeah. frizzy fluffiness so of it. So have you left it to air dry yet to Not see yet. what happens? No, and I'm still waiting for the day. I just haven't <laughs> had time. But it was like, the downtime of, with it was super quick because I had a, a carotene treatment before, mm. years ago, and you had to leave it straight and not wet it for like 48 uh, hours. Okay, yeah. Like, literally, like, they straighten it with the, the product in. Yeah. Um, And with this one, Matt, instantly washed it, blow dried it, and then curled it for me. And it was amazing. And I have seen such a difference with my, how long my hairstyle lasts, but also as well, the texture of my hair, the frizz has calmed down immensely, and I'm loving it. So that's what I've done for holidays, which is very exciting. That is a good idea. Yeah. So if you have got frizzy hair like me, I'd recommend getting I a little aura treatment. Holiday prep. Mine's like... Nails, Nails, manicure, pedicure. Yep. I get my eyelashes tinted yeah. because I feel like that makes such a big difference Huge. to me. Huge. Then I don't have to wear mascara, which I love, just a little eyelash curl. Yeah. And also facials. I had an amazing hydrofacial this week because yeah. after that job, I was quite stressed about it. Just feel like my skin was not looking. Especially cute. if you've got a long haul flight, a yeah. facial is key yeah. if you can so i went for a hydrofacial at kxu mm -hmm. and i that's my gym that i always go to and they do amazing spa treatments there and the hydrofacial it's like this machine that it's like a suction so it sucks the dirt out of your skin the best thing. but at the same time pushes all these sorts of like serums and vitamins yeah back into the skin mm. 
So you're left with clear skin, but you're also it's not like dried out. No. It's really glowy, really hydrating. Oh, the best. My skin has not looked so good in forever. Yeah. Like, I never used to wear foundation, but I would say the last like six months I've been wearing foundation most days because I haven't Shoot. loved how my skin's been yeah. looking. And since the hydrafacial, I'm now back to not wearing foundation. Amazing. Just my concealer, bronzer, blush. Stunning. Situation. You've always had good skin though, even though when you don't think you do. I never had bad skin, but I think I like flawless. And yeah. everyone loves yeah. flawless skin. I mean, I can't talk because I love makeup, so I probably put on too much makeup for what I actually need. But Yeah, because yeah. you have flawless skin as well. It has calmed down you immensely. Have really good skin. It's the best thing. Like, yeah. um, what have I been having? I'm saying it's the best thing. I haven't even told you what it is. Uh, the Elizabeth Arden Retinal Cream. Mm. I genuinely think my skin has changed just because of that. See, I'm scared to use those products now because I think I overdid it with skincare, which is what damaged yeah. my skin barrier. And my skin was fine before. Mm. It was it was verging on perfection. Yeah. And then, being such a like product whore that I am, <laughs> and loving like a twenty step. Yeah skincare yeah. routine I think I overdid it so now I'm just like mm. so this is a really delicate retinol because I can't oh. my skin does not agree with retinol and it's like the tiniest bit and you can use it in the morning with SPF and at night time mm-hmm. and it honestly and I just use it with the Sarah Chapman digital rest and yeah. uh, rest and shield yeah. and that's it that's my skincare and it is that has been game changing. And an now. LED mask. Oh yes, yeah, so that speaking of the LED mask, which I still really want. Mm-hmm. I did infrared sauna. Yes. At KXU twenty five so minutes, good. which is also red light. Yeah. But obviously for full body, and it's really good to yeah. calm your skin down. Any redness, any like scarring, mm-hmm. and really stuff, good for blemishes. Yeah. yeah. Um, antibacterial, and it helps with like the reproduction of like your collagen and like the elasticity in your skin as well. I actually just got sent one from NZ Skin. Have you seen them? No. They look, it's it's really weird. It's, so with the, I have a current body one, which is like the white mask. That's the one I want, I really want. And it's a bit more like flexible, really travel friendly. Yeah. And this NZ Skin one looks like, it gives me like horror movie vibes (laughs) because it's like a thick pink like mask so i have the eye ones which so i kind of know what you're talking about like in a, terms of it being quite stiff and hard yeah. and it literally looks like a i can't explain it but like if i was going to pretend to be someone like mrs doubtfire or something and then i've put a mask on it's really scary so is it hard yeah it's really thick as well but apparently it's incredible mm. so maybe that's my at home one and then the, the current, current body, body one's one. good for travelling, isn't it? It's, it's incredible, light. yeah. And it's like, it literally like folds into a pancake. It's so good. I might take it for the plane. <laughs> Could you imagine? I, if I was flying business class, I would. Yeah. I don't know if I have the balls to the thing. economy. Because yeah. <laughs> business class, at least you're in a little pod and you can just yeah, do what you want. Literally. No one cares. No, I think I might get mum and I some eye patches. Yeah, I love an eye patch. Eye patches are a bit more appropriate yeah not the whole full (laughs) sheet mask i'll get the little eye masks so last week as well we were very kindly and excitedly invited to the first ltk gala which if you don't know what ltk is it's like to know it and basically it's an incredible app where you can shop our wardrobes Mm -hmm. our homes our favorite amazon products our food it's all under one roof and it's kind of like I've created like magazine shop, yeah. isn't it? It's so good. It kind of houses everything that we have in our wardrobe. Mm-hmm. So if you ever see us wearing an outfit on Instagram or TikTok, if you go onto our LTK, it's usually on there, All there. with direct links to everything yeah. that we're wearing. And even if we can't find the exact same product, we can list similar like to like products. Beauty products, yeah. everything. It's so good. And it's yeah. really good for finding what you guys like within our content as well to see what is the biggest drive. It's Mm -hmm. so interesting. TK had a gala on Thursday at the Natural History Museum. It was incredible. I didn't even know that they'd like did events in the Natural History Museum. But then actually one of our other friends, Oscar, he was at an event there the next night. Oh really? Yeah. 
It was really bizarre. I feel like everyone was having an event at the History Museum. Wow. But I literally felt like I was at the night of the museum and all the <laughs> artefacts and everything was going to come to life. It was amazing. It was, it was so it cool. It was very, very cool. It was very, really, it was really good. Every Instagrammer, content creator, yeah. tick, I literally was it like was a fangirl. I was like, there. I know you, I love you. <laughs> all there. And everyone looked so glamorous, so beautiful. Everyone was dressed yeah. to the nines. Everyone made an effort. Yeah, Like a did. huge effort. And I feel like... You're going to get that with content creators, aren't you? But, like, when you yeah. sometimes go to a party, like a normal party, no one really goes all out, where this was, like, all out. Oh, everyone, we need to get the content, that's why. Yeah, Any every, excuse. literally, everyone went all out, which was just sensational. There was a couple of sponsors, and I went with the Outnet, which is... Kind of under the roof of Netaport. No, it is under the roo- roof of Netaport, mm-hmm. isn't it? And the outlet is basically an outlet for designer pieces. So you can shop yeah. old and new seasons for up to 70% off. And they have like a really good array of designers on there. So it's kind of like Vista Village online. Yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah, it is. And it's so good. And I got my whole outfit from there. I'm actually wearing the earrings. I haven't stopped wearing these they're earrings. Like, they're really cool. They're so cool and just like really chunky, but they're actually quite lightweight as well. I love them. But yeah, I got this whole outfit from the Outnet and I actually start now browsing the Outnet. Mm, it's I need to have a so look on good, really good for like accessories, for shoes, like especially now going into spring, summer. Mm, I do need some new They've shoes. got some really good arrays of like Todd's. Uh, Jacquemus Hills, which are mm, I've had my eye on those. Yeah, they've got a mixture on there. And they were also sponsored by Space NK. Space NK, which is like my uh, my go to online beauty platform. Mm, really good. Yeah, and I think the best place to shop beauty. I think so. I love the shop itself. Like actually going into Space NK. I think it's way more curated. Mm, definitely. They don't just have every single product like I think all of the products and all the brands that they have on there are genuinely really good really good products so it's not too overwhelming they've actually started their own products have you seen this no so you can go with your shampoos and conditioners and hand soap and hand cream Mm. and they have refill stations I think in our local one they do but they definitely have it in the one on Sloan Square and they have different, and they have them in candles and different fragrances. Oh, that's cool. And the best travel cosmetic bags. I have like 10. <laughs> what, are they clear? Mm. Oh yeah, I love those ones. So they're good for... Yeah, they're really good. They're good for security, so you don't actually have to use plastic bags. They're verified to go oh, through. Really? Yeah, to go I through I thought the... you always had to depot in those plastic no. bags because you have to fit all of your products in that one plastic bag i think the small version is okay because i've always just left it in there and just gone through i always get in trouble yeah i always have to take them out and put them in the little plastic bag and it's like i end up taking the lid off of things to make more space and that is the bane i'm really making sure with dubai that everything is like just ready to go smooth sailing yeah I'm going to make it into the airport for champagne. <laughs> I was so gutted with our flight to Bali last time because we, we waited for a queue for so long and oh, yeah, we, we missed we missed the whole airport experience. We and did. I just kept walking past the champagne bar like, <laughs> no. Although the first time I went to Bali, we did. That was our oh, yeah. first holiday together That's like my, that was really cute. It's my favourite thing is to go to the champagne bar. So it was also the full winter 24 fashion month. Fall. <laughs> fall. Did fall. I say it? <laughs> fall. Winter, it's fall. AW. And we want to discuss it. I know. I know <laughs> we're going to talk about spring, but I think the free, peeps, the free fashion shows that we've picked, I think we can take... From and use it in our spring summer collection for sure. Yeah, because we always want to be ahead of the time. Yeah. Go on then, you start. So my favourite from Fashion Month was Saint Laurent. Mm-hmm. I just think they always do it so beautifully. I think they have the most stunning silhouettes. It's so oh. feminine but cool, sexy, cool. They nailed it. However, it was very sheer. Yes. Very sheer. I think a lot of the shows were sheer though. 
There was. So we also saw it at Ferragamo. Mm. They had a lot of shit mm-hmm. in there. But I think you could take it and layer it. Like you can always put a little bra underneath or a little yeah. like vest top over and do some layering. I liked how they did the oversized blazer. Oh, so they wore that. like sheer garments underneath. But then, yeah. le- then covered up with an oversized blazer. Kind of reminded me a lot of um, the last Prada runway. Yeah. Because Prada did a lot of the like sheer skirts mm-hmm. with a jumper over the yeah. top. Love that. It just gives a bit of a sexy vibe to it. Yeah. But I agree, the structures and the style of the garments mm-hmm. was so beautiful. Yeah. Like I love that V neck. And all the earthy tones. Ugh, gorgeous. Yeah, I, I thought it was very beautiful. Lots of draping. Really lovely. Ultra feminine. The colour palette as well was just on yeah. point. I do love the red as well. I feel like the red's Red's good. not going, is it's it? It's not going anywhere. I feel like things normally transition so quickly. Mm. But um, red seems to just be sticking around. Yeah. Which and is I'm, great because yeah. if you've invested in red for last season. <laughs> Literally. You don't have to worry about it going out Literally. of style now. It's it's coming back so we can reuse our cherry red pieces that we invested in. I really like the layering with YSL as well. I really like the neck detail that they've got going on, this kind of like frilliness with the structure. I think it's very like feminine, but very, I don't know, just very old school as well, which is quite pretty. I like that. And then we had Tom Ford, which I loved. Mm -hmm. I feel like Tom Ford really encapsulated that whole mob wife aesthetic that's trending <laughs> on TikTok right I now. I feel like you are so mob wife. <laughs> Am I? You're like style, yeah, with the big yeah, fur jackets. So. Yeah, they had a lot of fur. They had like three piece pinstripe suits, yeah. but super sexy. Like the, the waistcoats were really low cut. Mm. And the silhouettes were just really feminine, yeah. but very like boss bitch vibes. Boss Love bitch. it. Love it. I love Tom Ford. And then we had the Chloe show, which then I can go, and that is me. (laughs) (laughs) I have been a Chloe girl through and through. And for for ages, I really didn't like anything. And even like, I think I said in the bag podcast, my first bag, and I think every time I wanted to buy something designer, I always wanted Chloe. I was such a Chloe girl. And I feel like this is the first time in such a long time it felt like Chloe again. Mm -hmm. And it was the art director, Chamina Kamali. It was her first show back at Chloe. She used to be at Chloe previously. Then she went to YSL and then she came back. Mm -hmm. And I just, she's such a Chloe girl, very 70s, French, Mm -hmm. Parisian chic. Like, she's so cool. I felt like it just was like, it was perfect. All the frilly details. Again, very like, the mesh as well, like yeah. very see-through, but... So much shit. So playful. I love so the colours. We need to continue our summer bodies into winter mm-hmm. this year because it seems like a lot's <laughs> going to be on, on show. show. Yeah, <laughs> but I just, I could really relate to this runway show so much because it was all about little frilly dresses, like kind of like that oversized, nothing yeah. else fitted. It was just about that kind of like feminine style lots of yeah. ruffles the colors were stunning i just love that trench coat that's beautiful there's this gorgeous green trench coat and the like the layering and oh i love it so much very yeah, you said that we were excited for spring and now we're lusting over winter but again. i feel like the chloe collection is very spring summer for me the chloe show was like my favorite Oh, to be a part of fashion week I know. one day. If I got invited to a Chloe show, I think I'd cry. <laughs> I'd absolutely cry. I'd cry for you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the next part of this podcast, we're going to be talking about what to invest into for spring and summer. And I know we kind of spoke about it a little bit when it came to finding our style yeah. and capsule wardrobe, but I feel like we need this education and kind of like revisit for yeah. ourselves because and I'm buying just, everything. <laughs> yeah, key pieces that you can start incorporating into your wardrobe for the new season, things that are trending. Mm-hmm. So you have your capsule wardrobe, but then for each season, you'll have some key pieces that yeah. can really help elevate and kind of put together more of a personal 
style for yeah, yourself. Yeah, definitely. So what what have you recently invested into? I think ballet flats are going to be a really big thing and slingbacks. Yes. I have my Chanel denim slingbacks, which I just cannot wait to wear. I cannot wait to wear. I'm desperate for you to wear them. The triple <laughs> denim look because oh denim, God, denim yeah. is really, really It's going to be huge. Denim jackets, an oversized jacket, denim shirts yeah. with um, a paired with a denim jean. Mm. It's going to be a real, real big thing. 100%. In spring. Definitely. So I'm really excited about that. So yeah, I think ballet flats, mm-hmm. definitely, because that ties in with the very elegant feminine trend yeah. that we have at the moment. I think sambas are still going to be in. Sambas, yeah. yeah. I just bought a pair of like auburn sambas. I can't believe she found these. I, love these. I can't believe, I feel like no one's bought them no. yet. Well, they're such, are they still online? They're, they're from Office. Wow. They were eighty pounds. That's fantastic. I know. That is really, really good. So, yeah, I'm still waiting to style them a bit more. I want to style them. I think with white trousers. Yeah. I really would love to find a matching kind of auburn bag. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm still trying to play along with the colours, but I'm actually really struggling because I'm such a neutral girl. But I do think neutrals are really in. Like if you look yeah. at what we've just seen from Fashion Month. Yeah. Everything is very neutral, earthy tones. Definitely. I'm, I think with me, when it comes to pair and accessories, the bag and shoes have to match. Yeah, I agree. Like, for me, if they don't match, I feel a bit lost. <laughs> <laughs> so, carrying on with shoes, a pair of shoes that we have definitely got to take out of our wardrobe mm-hmm. is our Gucci monogram mules. Yeah. I have been just grabbing them at the moment because they're just so easy to wear. Yeah, and they're super comfortable. So comfortable, and they just go with everything. And especially at the moment where we don't want to wear heavy, wintry boots, it's so nice to just chuck them on because I haven't Mm. got a pair of the Chanel flat slingbacks yet. (laughs) I will, I will. But our loafers i'm so glad we got them because they are so comfortable i could definitely buy into those in a few more colors 100 percent. like i like the slightly off-white ones Ooh, that yeah. they have are really nice yeah and they've also bought out some loafers that are in like a tan suede that Ooh, i've seen lovely i think they're really nice oh, as nice. well like a warm color or a chocolate brown Mm, they have chocolate brown i think and they have like a tan how about both and they're kind of affordable. Yeah, I think they're really reasonable, especially because they're such a classic shoe as well. They might have gone up in price now, everything, inflation. Yeah. Inflation, inflation. But I do think they're reasonably affordable and they're actually comfortable. Yeah. And I can give them the certified comfort stamp <laughs> because 90% of my shoes literally grate my feet apart. Oh. <laughs> and I can safely say... The Prince Town Gucci mules are ones that don't. They're the best. They're really comfy. Really nice. I'm going to invest into some Chanel slingbacks flat. But I'm not too sure what colour yet. But they're so comfortable. Yeah. Something else I would say to invest into for your spring summer collection for now. Lighter coloured jeans. Yes. I've been investing into these this style at And Other Stories. Because this style just fits me like a glove and it comes in like blue this really nice like dark denim but mm-hmm. it feels very spring summer color yeah. and this cream cream jeans i'm just very oh, much yeah, here I for need it a cream jean really Actually, good these ones that i'm wearing from massimo duty they're lovely they're kind of gray blue yeah so i feel like they're quite a good spring yeah because normally i would associate a gray jean for winter yeah but i think they're quite a nice they're lovely. The colour. And they're a bit more easier to style with different tones. Yeah. They're a bit more of like a, kind of like a, a warm grey. Yeah, they're a bluey grey. Yeah. I find that, I find it really difficult to style my grey pieces. I think grey only looks good if you pair it with grey. All grey, yeah. You have to do an all grey look. Mm-hmm. And I've tried to have grey jeans before and I just can't get yeah. on board with it. No, I like these. These are like a softer yeah. version. Yeah. I also think a great transition piece is buying into finer knits. Yes, definitely. So, like, I mean, I'm just the epitome of spring transition right now because I'm wearing this really thin knit 
kind of like polo style mm, really nice jumper where's this one from this is from massimo as well oh, i'm such lovely. a massimo girl right now love massimo so good so i think this is good because you can still layer it now yeah you can put a little t-shirt on underneath and invest in the lighter colors yeah you can layer it with a coat mm -hmm. and then when it comes to spring you can ditch the layers and you've exactly. still got a piece that you can carry through but you could definitely wear that with shorts or yeah. a little satin skirt yeah. or like a dress and then have it over the top yeah. because it still gets quite cold yeah. in England. But I think that's a really good tip for a transition piece. It's definitely spring and autumn are all about the kind of onion method of mm -hmm. layering. Like, I feel like it's so risky to go for something super light yeah. or super heavy yeah. because you just never know until it gets to like midday what the weather's going to be like yeah. because in the morning it could be Baltic but then later on it could be boiling hot I'm getting on and off the tubes in London oh my god you're hot you're cold you're hot you're cold so onion method I've noticed cropped trench coats are huge yeah. I think one of the biggest trends this season mm. so you're kind of going from like the full length trench coats in winter yeah. and you're transitioning into the cropped versions yeah. to create a bit of a lighter silhouette Definitely. for spring and I've actually got a full length leather trench coat yeah from Asimo Duty and then I've got the two the cropped crops. ones in black and cream yeah so I'm like perfect they are I'm already amazing. there with it yeah I've just got the Jane and Tash one and that's kind of like a trench yeah style yeah, but in the leather style. theme yeah I have a cropped trench from and other stories that I got last year. And I think it's still in stock. And also the one which is from Arquette, you see yeah. it everywhere. That's not going anywhere. That's like been repeated for like three seasons. I keep seeing it. But yeah, I definitely would recommend a crop yeah. trench. And I think the crop leather trenches, or you could get like a traditional trench fabric. Yeah. But I think the leather ones look really cool with knitwear. Yeah, definitely. Like how we're seeing these knitted skirts and sheer mm. skirts everywhere from like Prada and yeah. Saint Laurent. Yeah. I think that laid with a leather jacket gives a really cool silhouette. Yeah. And they're also good for evenings as well. Mm. They're just such a nice jacket to wear in the evening. And yeah. in the summer with little dresses. Yeah. Little like silk skirts. And then you have a cool leather jacket over the top. Yeah, I'm very excited. Another trend that I'm seeing a lot is cohorts. Yeah. So trousers mm -hmm. and waistcoats are yeah. going to be huge. And the reason I love this trend is because how easy is it to get dressed in the morning? Oh my God, it's the best. When you're just like, great, trousers, matching waistcoat, yeah. outfit done. You don't even have to think about Ugh. pairing pieces together. It's no. just done for you. I have a beautiful set from A-Line. I'm actually wearing the trousers. And I feel like... Also as well, it's such a good idea to invest into a set because then you yeah. have a multitude of different styles you can wear mm -hmm. it with. So you can wear the top on its own, the trousers on its own, or just wear it all together. Yeah. And you've got yourself free outfits. Yeah. It's so good. I'd really recommend it as well. Yeah. And even for winter, if you get the matching blazer, yeah. you can be wearing that now. And then... I love it. You can, as Amelia said, do the onion on your exactly. of yeah. taking the blazer off for spring or you yeah. can just drape it over your shoulders. Because even with um, cause the A-line set, it's a free piece. Mm -hmm. so And it also just looks so smart. So when you yeah. wear the waistcoat and the blazer with a pair of jeans, yeah, it looks so cool. But also if you pair it all together, you've got yourself a really nice like wedding look. Mm. or oh, I just love it. Another brand that we love for their two-piece or three-piece sets is Dish. I love Dish. They're an Australian brand. Mm. They do a lot of linen two-pieces. Yeah. And we got a couple of um, their two-pieces last year, didn't we? Amazing. And That's we so wore good. them to death. I've actually got... Very I'm good. waiting for it to get warmer, but they've brought out a new style, which is a little bit longer. Oh. And it's so beautiful, and then it's got a tie at the back so you can cinch in the waist. Oh, no. Is that the one with the slightly higher neckline? Like it's more of a crew neck rather than a v-neck? No, it's still v-neck, okay. but I have seen that one as well. But I got it in black and then this like really nice taupey, khaki colour. And I'm just waiting for it to be a little bit warmer so I can wear sleeveless <laughs> tops because well, they are Dubai stunning. Well, Dubai next week. You know, or this week. This week. This week. Thursday. Maybe you can wear it there. I've got too many outfits. Oh my god, what a problem. What I know. A problem I know. Have. We'll talk about Dubai and packing and everything like that in the next <laughs> episode.
Okay, guys, we are going to leave it there. We hope it gave you some ideas on what to start purchasing for your spring summer wardrobe. Gave you a little bit of inspo. And we hope you enjoyed this episode. And we'll see you next week. What are we going to be talking about? Dubai. Dubai. Well, I mean, he's off to Dubai, in case you didn't already know. Did I mention I'm going to Dubai? <laughs> so she's going to give us all of her recommendations. Yeah. Cool restaurants to go to and Ugh. the best beach clubs and everything. And I guess we'll just talk about more clothes and bags yeah. and see what, what Holly gets. <laughs> what I can't really speak. <laughs> see what Holly gets up to this week as well. Yeah. Well, the, <laughs> what is the saying? While the cat's away, the mice will play. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next time guys bye guys bye